What are the best e-bikes for 2021? The market has heated up so much in the last two years, it's unbelievable. So let's check out my picks for 2021. Riders, welcome back to Sands Bikes, where you know we only talk e-bikes, and today we're looking at the best e-bikes for 2021. I bought my YT decoy almost two years ago, and wow, the market has changed. So I thought I'd do a video on my favorite three super light e-bikes, my favorite three trail e-bikes, and my favorite three super enduro DH e-bikes. I'm also gonna look at the categories, super light, trail, and super enduro, and kind of give my opinion which bike is best for which rider. But before we get into the video, we have to say thanks to Schwabi, the new sponsor at Sam's Bikes. They do help keep the lights on and they make amazing e-mountain bike and mountain bike tires. Right now, I'm running the Magic Mary Big Betty and they're a great combination for my Levo and my Commensal. And riders, I wanna thank everyone that's been watching the channel. 150,000 views last month, which is amazing. So thanks so much, but only 13,000 subscribers. So riders, please hit that subscribe button. It really means a lot. And riders, don't forget to enter the Ride Concept competition. We're giving away one pair of shoes worldwide. All you need to do is head over to Sam's Bike, subscribe, and go to the Lab Rats episode and tell us why you ride. It's that simple. Now onto the super light category. For me, I think this is the category that we're gonna see mature the most in the next 12 months. Like if you look at the full fat or the full powered e-bikes, that's a very mature market right now. Pretty much every brand is well represented. And if you look at the super light, we've only got a few players. So I reckon we're gonna see a lot of movement this year. But first of all, I categorize a super light e-bike, anything under 20 kilos, and it normally comes with a smaller battery and a less powerful motor. If you're a fan of the channel, you would know for the last six months, I've been riding the Levo SL, and I love the Levo SL. The long-term review is coming, but I think it's really important that people understand what super light bikes are and who they really are for. If you like the idea of having a cross-country bike going up and an enduro bike going down, then a super light bike is pretty good for you because you do work harder going up, but also when you're going down, it's like riding a normal bike. If you're a rider that's not that fit and you still wanna ride with your mates that are riding analog bikes, a super light's a great option because it will give you a bit more power and you know, some of your mates are fitter, but you can still go ride with them, so it's a no-brainer. And if you're one of the fitter riders in your e-bike group, I would say a super light bike is gonna work for you, but you're really gonna earn those rides. If you're riding with a group that are all riding full fat, full powered e-bikes, and you're on a super light, you're gonna have to be fit. I do it, but I also think about who I'm riding with. Sometimes I'm like, ooh, nah, I'm gonna take the full fat on that day, because it really, you are really gonna be working harder. So my top three picks are, of course, the Levo SL. I've been riding this bike for the last six months, and I love it, man. It's such a fun, natural bike. For me, I call it the purest bike because I'm a bit of a purist, but it really feels like you're riding a normal bike. I love the motor. The motor gives you some resistance, so it does feel like you're pedaling. It does feel like you're riding a normal bike, and also the range is out of control. If you haven't seen my range test, I did like 56 Ks on the SL, with a 320 watt battery. And then I did the same ride pretty much with the Commensal EP8 with a 630 watt battery. And I only got something like seven or nine Ks more. So the range is really impressive, but yeah, you do work more. The SL is a really nice bike and it's starting at 6,000 euros. Number two, some say the Levo Killer, the new Orbea Rise. 16.2 kilos, 150, 140 suspension, running on 29s, has a Shimano EP8 motor detuned to 60 newton meters and a 360 watt internal battery. The Obeya is a really nice looking bike, well-specced and pretty well-priced. 
But for me, I wish it had 160-150 or 150-150. 140 at the back for the way I like to ride is probably not enough. And the Albert Rise is starting at 6,300 euros. And number three, Rockwild RX375. I actually missed this bike off my last list. I'm not sure why, I just missed it. It's an absolute beast. 170 suspension front and back, rocking the Shimano EP8 motor with a full 85 newton meters of power and a 375 watt battery that has like this quick release button, which can be changed, it looks like in seconds. I think it's a really great design. For me, I love the look of this bike, I love the design, I love how you can pull the battery out really fast. It's a little bit expensive and you're gonna need a spare battery and those batteries are gonna set you back 750 euros. So it's not the cheapest bike out there, but it's definitely a contender and it's starting at 7,000 euros. Now into trail e-bikes. They typically have 140 to 160 millimeters of travel, 29 wheels or mullet set up, so 29 at the front, 27 at the back. And these are kind of good for everything. You know, your back country, your occasional trip to the bike park, they'll kind of get everything done. Number one, the Trek rail. If you're a fan of the channel, you will know that I really like the rail. It's got modern geometry, pretty aggressive geometry, running on 29s, a shortish chain stay. It's also got a flip chip, so you could run a mullet on the back, which would be a great option. Also, it's really well priced, starting at 5,000 euros. And if you're someone that likes to upgrade bikes, I think the five is a great spot to start because you're getting a good frame, you're getting a good motor and a pretty big battery. So it's a good option. Number two, the Merida E160, another one of my fave bikes. A couple of my friends in Australia have the old one and the new one. And I'm gonna tell you riders, I've ridden both and it's such a great bike. You got 160 up front, 150 at the back. I mean, the new 10K is so beautiful. It's coming with the Shimano EP8, 630 watt battery, killer spec. Uh, it's pretty expensive, but it's pretty well priced for what you're getting. And the E160 starts at 4,500 euros. And now to the ugly duckling in the list, the Lapierre GLP2. I know this is the bike I love to hate. Man, it's an ugly bike, but it does look amazing on paper. And one of my mates who's a bike journalist in Spain, he rode it and tested it a few weeks ago. And he rang me and said, Sam, believe the hype. It's an amazing bike. So what they've done is they've put the battery just above the bottom bracket. So, and it's a smaller battery, it's a 500 watt battery. So when you're riding, the front of the bike will manual better, you'll be able to lift up over obstacles and it will turn more like a natural bike. And also Nico Vurio, 10 times world downhill champion, had a lot to do with the design of this bike. So he really knows what's what. For me, it has to get on the list. And now on to super enduro or downhill e-bikes. And in my opinion, this is the best market because you've got a motor, so why not have the most suspension possible on these bikes? You know, like go straight up, straight down and repeat it. And for me, this category was really hard just to pick three, so I picked four. Number one, Santa Cruz Bullet. I love the Bullet. VPP suspension, 170 front and back, running on mullets, Shimano EP8, 630 watt battery, super modern geometry, and I'm sure the bike rides like a V10 with a motor strap to it starting from 7,900 euros, as I said, not the cheapest bike in the list. Number two, Specialized Kinevo, the classic, the original. It had to make the list. A whopping 180 millimeters of travel front and back, running on 27 wheels, Bros Mag S motor with 90 newton meters and a massive 700 watt battery. I tested the Kinevo about a year ago. This bike is laughable. It is so much fun. And what I love about the Kinevo is it has that powerful bros motor. You know, if you're the type of person that wants to just do lots of ups and lots of downs, this is a perfect bike because it really is like a diesel and it just powers you up that mountain. And with a 700 watt battery, you don't get battery fear. And the Kinevo is starting at 6,100 euros. Number three, the Commensal SX, my current big mountain e-whip. All I can say is the Commensal SX is another super fun bike. It's actually laughable what you can do on this bike. 
You don't have to pick your line. You don't have to be gentle. You just plow through stuff, which I love, you know. Some days I want to go out on the big SX. Some other days I want to go out on the Levo SL. But if you want to plow, the SX is a beast. Running on 27 wheels, 180, 165 suspension, Shimano EP8 motor, 630 watt battery, and it's commensal, so it's online, so very good value. It's a great bike, starting at 5,400 euros. And number four, Canyon e Torque. I know this got some bad press, and maybe I gave it some bad press when it came out, because it only came out with a 500 watt battery, but I'm starting to understand it. Look, this bike is designed to go up and go down, and I love the geometry. It's 180, 170 suspension. It's got a super short 330 mil chainstay. It's got the Shimano EP8 with a 500 watt battery, but also you can buy an extra battery for 500 euros. And the top spec, which is coming with 38 and an X2 rear shock, is 5,800 euros. It's great value. Definitely get the extra battery. And if you're out on a long ride, maybe just hide the battery in a tree or a bush somewhere like, and come back and get it. I'm sure no one's gonna find it. And you know, like you're gonna have a thousand watts of power. And also I really like the fact that the bike's pretty light for what it is. I think it's like 23 kilos. Like it's a big downhill bike. So yeah, I think they've done well there. Okay, riders, that's my list for the top three. Super light, trail, and four super enduro downhill rigs. But tell me, riders, what are you thinking? What have I missed? I mean, these are my favorites, but really, there are so many good bikes on the market right now. Now, if I just had to pick one out of each category, okay, the super light, I'm definitely gonna go for the SL. I love the bike. It's super dynamic, super fun to ride. And for me with the Superlight, it does come down to range. I think you're gonna get more range out of the SL than you are out of the other two bikes. Okay, now for the trail bike, I would definitely go for the Ugly Duckling, the Lapierre GLP2. I know it's bloody ugly, but I really love the geometry and I really like the design of the battery over the bottom bracket. I think it would be an amazing race bike. And right as my race bike is gonna be built in the next two months, and this is definitely a contender. And for the Super Enduro downhill e-bikes, for me, this is a super hard category. I think all four bikes would be great. But you know, these bikes are designed to push pretty hard. So if you are gonna push this bike really hard, I'd probably be going for the Kinevo or the Bullet because you have that local support but also the commensal signature at 7,100 euros. That bike is coming so well specced, I wouldn't change one thing. And the Canyon with the top spec, you get that extra battery, so 1,000 watts of battery. You know, you get the 38X2, really good build for 6,300. So riders, I'm not sure which one I'd pick. I think they're all great options, but honestly, any bike in this list, I think would be a winner. You know, the market has heated up so much in 2021. So these bikes are all gonna be great. And riders, if you have any questions on any of these bikes, you know, which category you're thinking of going into, super light trail or super enduro downhill, let me know. Hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. I answer everyone and I'm really happy to help. And riders, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Share it with like-minded people. It really does mean a lot. And stay safe out there. And I'm gonna see you next week.